with a rounded box. And I'm going to do this over here just so we can see what we're doing and we can always move it over to our bucket. So let's get the corner here. Actually for this one, let's go ahead and we're going to duplicate this bucket background layer. And the easiest way to do that is to click on it and drag it down to new layer. And it'll make a copy of it. And what we want to do is we'll go ahead and rename this to bucket header. I'm going to pull this panel out so we can read it a little better. Um, and let's go ahead and turn these effects off. And what we're going to do is we're just going to get our rectangle marquee tool and select everything that we don't want to be part of that bucket. Um, normally what I would do is make a mask uh, so we can have a non-destructive editing, but uh, I'm fairly confident that we're not going to need to manipulate this later. So we'll just go ahead and hit the delete key. And so there we have our header. Now let's go ahead and do some color. So let's double click on gradient overlay. And we're going to do a kind of blue gradient. Um, double click on the gradient. And let's pick one of our stopping colors. And we'll go to the blue. Get kind of a dark blue. And come to our other stopping color and We'll get kind of a lighter, paler blue. And say OK. And OK. And we still have reverse checked since we duplicated that layer, so let's uncheck that. And there we go. And the next thing you'll see is there's a very subtle white border around this. Um, so let's go ahead and add that now. So we'll go to stroke. And by default, it's usually a three pixel black line. We're going to bring that size down to one. And we're going to change the color to white. And we're going to change the position to inside. And uh, we'll say OK. And um, once you start adding a lot of these layer um, styles, uh, your layer palette can get a little cluttered, so you can go ahead and minimize these layers so we can see what we're doing. Let's go ahead and turn our screenshot off. Um, I still think our drop shadows are a little darker, but now that we've made them, we'll just go ahead and keep them as is. Let's go ahead and make this learn more button, and we'll do that again by making a rounded rectangle box and we'll come over here and we'll use this one as a guide and it looks like our edges are a little more rounded than theirs are on here but uh, we'll just go ahead and keep it as is and we'll go ahead and rasterize this shape and we'll call this button back from and we're gonna go ahead and use blending mode here or layer style that is and do a color overlay and we're just gonna make it black Now, one thing you'll notice is this uh, kind of 3D effect. So we're going to come and zoom in here. And we're going to make another shape. Another rounded rectangle that's going to sit inside. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make the radius a little bit smaller. the radius of 2. We're going to kind of click and drag and bring this into the center. And there we go. Um, 
Um, now we'll go ahead and rasterize this. And we're going to call this button highlight. And we're going to come in and add a layer style. And we're going to put a gradient overlay. And we'll click on this to edit our gradient. And what we're going to do is we're going to select a slightly lighter gray and maybe even another make this uh, black just a little lighter. Say OK and let's go ahead and reverse that. And then we'll say OK and zoom back out. And there you go, we have a nice 3D effect. Um, we can probably tighten it up. Um, there's this pretty crisp. Or it seems to be a little softer. But uh, you get the point. I don't want to spend too much time on this tutorial. It will be extremely long. Um, what I will do though is I'm going to go ahead and make this a little wider. Bring it out close to the edge here. So what we'll do is with our free transform tool. Control T. And we're going to pull the side out and what we're going to do is hold down alt at the same time so that it uh, will pull from the center and bring both sides out. And we're just going to do it about that far and hit enter to apply it. Zoom back out and there you go. You know what we might, uh, let's go back in here in our gradient and we're going to make it even more subtle. So let's go to this lighter gray and double click on it and bring the color down even more. There we go. Now let's go ahead and turn off our screenshot. Um, now what we could do is we need to bring or we need to bring this button over to our um, bucket. Um, but now is a good time to start doing some grouping here to save us some time uh, later on down the road. So we'll go ahead and make a layer group. And we're going to call it button. And we're going to click on the button highlight and drag it into the button and the button background and drag that in there. Now we can minimize this group. And with this selected, we can hold down control and drag both elements of the button. And we'll try and find the center here. Again, I'm just eyeballing it. But uh, that looks about right. Turn on our guide here. Looks like theirs is a little bit higher. So uh, let's bring it up a little more. And they've actually got a uh, drop shadow on theirs. Too. So let's go ahead and expand this and we'll double click on effects for the button background. And let's go ahead and make a drop shadow. And we'll bring the distance all the way in. Pull the size down just a little bit. And there, that looks like what they've got going. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do some more grouping. And we're going to make a group and we'll call it bucket one. And we're going to go ahead and drag these two layers into that. And what we'll do is just hold down shift and select the other one and drag them in. And we also are going to bring the button in there. Um, by default, it's going to put it underneath those layers. So let's drag it up to the top. So now we have our bucket. And the reason I did this is it's going to be really easy to make the other four buckets. And I'll show you how. We can either make a duplicate of this layer by coming down to the new layer and uh, dragging this uh, group down to the new layer and it'll make a duplicate. Um, the other way, which I, I find much easier and, and great, is we can hold down Control and Alt. 
and click and drag. And while we're dragging, you'll see that we uh, we can kind of get off track here. So we can hold down Shift as well. Uh, it's quite a tongue twister for your fingers, but you get kind of used to it. And we'll just pull it out here. And there you go. And then just like that, we can release the Control and Alt and press them again. And hold down Shift and make another bucket. And do one more. And we'll come in here and change the names of these. Okay. Um, now these are really just going to be for reference. I wanted to show you how to do that uh, duplicate with the Control and Alt. Um, because if we were going to do this efficiently, we would finish the bucket, uh, text and everything, before making these duplicates. So for now, let's just make one more group, and we'll call it buckets. And we're going to hold down shift and select all four of these and drag it into buckets. Uh, this isn't totally necessary, but uh, in order to keep our layers panel um, a little more organized. We can do that and just do that and it also gives us the ability to turn the visibility of the buckets on and off. It's going to look a lot better once we start getting text in here.